Hello, I'm Dr. Phyllis Tien, Professor of Medicine at UCSF. Today I'd like to discuss the updated 2023-2024 COVID-19 vaccine. So I want to begin by talking a little bit about the current status of COVID-19 in the United States. There have been reports of increasing rates of both COVID-19 hospitalizations and deaths in the last several weeks. And part of this is a trend in a shift in the uh, dominant subvariant of the Omicron variant in the United States, known as the EG.5 or ARIS subvariant, which is a member of the XBB family. So on the right hand side, you can look at a figure showing uh, by, by months and weeks the uh, changes in the subvariants uh, that are circulating in our community. And you can see to the far right that EG.5 is beginning to take hold, whereas the other variants are within that XBB family mostly. Uh, so there's also been an increasing concern over another subvariant known as the BA.2.86 or Parola, but it is still at a low level in the United States as of uh, monitoring uh, into September 2023. But the concern with this variant is that it has over 30 additional mutations over the BA.2 uh, subvariant that was circulating last year. So let me talk a little bit about the predicted efficacy of the 2023 to 2024 vaccine against these two new subvariants, the Parola and the ARIS. So the updated mRNA monovalent 2023-2024 COVID vaccine targets the Omicron subvariant XBB.1.5 that was circulating early in the year. Um, and it is a monovalent vaccine as opposed to our last booster vaccine, which was bivalent, because it is targeting just this Om Omicron subvariant, as opposed to the bivalent that targeted a Omicron subvariant plus the original wild type virus. So this new vaccine was approved by the FDA on September 11 and it was recommended by the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices shortly thereafter. The monovalent vaccine does appear to be effective against BA.2.86, which is growing in prevalence, like I previously mentioned, um, but it does appear that prior exposure to XBB naturally or through vaccination appears to improve neutralization titers against BA.2.86. This monovalent vaccine also appears to be effective against EG.5. So let's talk about some of the COVID-19 vaccine recommendations for this new updated one. So for children ages six months to four years, if it is the initial vaccination, they should receive either two or three doses of the updated COVID-19 vaccine, depending on the manufacturer. So, you know, it would be two for the Moderna vaccine or three for the Pfizer vaccine. And then if uh, they received a prior mRNA dose or doses, you will need one or two doses of updated, of the updated COVID-19 vaccine, depending on the number of prior doses. And so for everyone else age five years and older, it is recommended to receive one dose of the updated mRNA COVID-19 vaccine, regardless of vaccination history. So what about the recommendations for people who are immunocompromised? So if this is an initial vaccination, uh, they should receive a three-dose series of, up, of the updated mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. And it is preferable to have all the doses within the series to be from the same manufacturer. And this is what we mean when we say homologous. If uh, the person received a prior mRNA dose or doses, they will need one or two doses of updated COVID-19 vaccine, depending on the number of prior doses. So the stipulations for the 
homologous versus heterologous dosing, so meaning diff, you know, doses from different manufacturers, will depend on the patient age and the number of prior vaccine doses. Um, and then people who are immunocompromised may receive one or more additional updated mRNA COVID-19 vaccine doses. So some considerations to think about with uh, vaccination with this new updated vaccine is that they should be given two or more months after the last COVID vaccine. Uh, you no longer uh, have to wait three months after infection to receive the new vaccine. Uh, the vaccine can also be administered at the same time as other vaccines such as influenza and RSV or respiratory syncytial virus. There is still a rare risk of myocarditis and pericarditis, especially for males aged 12 to 39 years. Um, so that remains with this updated COVID vaccine. Revaccination should also be considered in recipients of stem cell transplant, or CAR T cell therapy, or those taking a B cell depleting therapy who received one or more doses prior to or during treatment. So the recommendations are to, to give the vaccine about three months after transplant or CAR T cell therapy and six months or more after completion of B cell depleting therapy or four weeks before the next B cell depleting therapy if taken on a continuing basis. So a few words about vaccine cost and access, uh, which is very important. So COVID vaccines must be covered by the Affordable Care Act compliant insurance plans. COVID vaccines um, are also covered by Medicare and uninsured children can obtain vaccines for free. The CDC has also a bridge access program for COVID vaccines to make it accessible at public health departments and retail pharmacies to uninsured adults. So thank you for joining me today. Please subscribe to Exchange CME's YouTube channel and check back regularly for updates on COVID-19.